Hello there. Welcome to another video. We've got 2v2 here on Tundra with uh, Yoda and Lucky Ashman taking on John the Late and Old Nixu. The oldest man in GBG. So on this map there is not too too much food. We're up to about eight nerfs or so. Philumpuset, a couple of Cupas. Can be quite hard to get. It's not always the easiest to get a wall off because of the introduction of like ice into your base, yeah. As you can see that this is looking good, you know. This is like the, the Vince McMahon gif, you know, where he gets more excited as you look around and then you hit this ice here. Whereas, yeah, there's just there's no walls going down there, you can't build on the ice. So make sure you get his uh, nurse gonna get them garrisoned in there to the nursery. Sometimes these uh, non lurable animals walk into a sort of closest vicinity to the command center, you can gun them down. But what you will notice in some areas where there's massive tree lines that they just go ballistic with their pathing. Like this fellow here. And you maybe need to put a food, pro a food processor down near something else and maybe establish some sort of checkpoint system where you can gun these guys down. See, look at them. So he's following them now. This one's decided he's had enough, he's stopped, and then this guy's just going even further away. Madness. Anyway, not too much going on, as it's the early game. We'll speed it up a little bit, that one. should be gunning this down right now. We push it further away now, though. Could have used one of these boys to push it back the way. Would have ended up a bit there. In this instance, you maybe get a food processor here, and then you just eat your full lump there, and you get these lads when they come close. You can fish on this map as well, as you can see there's a lot of fish on Tundra. Decent chunky ones as well, big medium boys. Very good. Difficult for people to like notice as well, unless they like specifically scout for it, because it's on the edge of the map. So you can maybe get like a hidden lead on someone if they don't really take that into account or don't pay too much attention when they're scouting you and thinking, hmm, this man has no farms. So a bit of a a wall being developed around John the Late's uh, animal nursery. I don't know if he's been mounted too many times or he's just done this for some sort of OCD reason. But he's probably a better serve just building a bit of a wall around your tree lines. I think he's maybe getting a wall here. I want to lure it. Troop center coming down for Yoda. Maybe looking to do early mounties. He does love to mount you. And I think in this instance, um, if the player that he's going to be mounting, because I thought I was, thought I was lucky there, but he's his teammate. If they are either fishing, which they are, or they're going like farms, that it, it tends to be very difficult to deal with because all your carbon's wrapped up in your economy. So you can actually get quite a bit of a lead. But he still doesn't have the power core down yet, so this is maybe a little bit too late. Like, if, if you're doing this, you need to probably pull more than one worker. Because, look, you can afford the mounties. It's like, the earlier you do it, the more damage you're going to do, the more chance of it snowballing out of control. So I think John's going to be okay here, because he's got... So there is a little bit of reason to what he was doing. He can get the power core wrapped up here. Which is going to serve him very well here. It's gonna, I think he's going to need to leave it open a little bit though to get a power droid down. Troop center for our lucky Ashman as well. So all players are going to be trooping, other than John who's probably just going to be soaking up aggression here because he's opted to fish. So I like to see that. So there's two Mounties coming from Nixu. And they're going to get on top of Lucky Ashman because he's built his troop center so far out here. His power core is going to be very exposed. Truth be told, he, really, he could have really built it here and had his power core here close to the command center. So that while it's being meleeed down by the Mounties, he can uh, garrison workers and shoot it from the command center. Gonna get this trooper out, but they're just going to get. 
melee down by the uh, the mounties on top of them. So the mounties can kill them quite fast. It's almost a bit of a, a skill match up there with uh, trooper recruits and mounties. Once you get a critical mass of about three trooper recruits, you're kind of you're kind of all right. Two, you probably lose, but like you kill one of the mounties, so it's not a bad trade. But three is three is the sort of sweet spot. So if you're mounting someone and they've got about three trooper recruits, that's probably the t time for you to leave and not think about trying to out it because you're not going to win. The other side of things, troopers are showing up here from Yoda. Not quite sure if he did send the mounties. I don't think he. He did, he still got his Nova. Yeah, he didn't build any, he just went for normal troops. So he got on top of the, troop, the turret, as you can see they've got a minimum range, so if you stand right next to it, it can't shoot you. But the other one, he's built it just out of range here. I think it's just about one range away, so it can't actually shoot at the troops. So you're going to have to wait till he's got his own standing army. Difficult for him, because it looks like he just wants to sort of turtle up with one troop centre and then maybe go T3 and get a, a lead that way with his boats once they hit a certain mass. Lucky Ashman has defended himself and he's just sort of trying to rebuild things, focus on his own eco. He looks like he wants to go T3. I just don't think he's his max win properly. So he's gone for two troop centers, but then he really wants to just skip the whole trooping dynamic in the first place. And he's not really making many more troopers, so I don't even think he's using either of these. So he didn't need to make a second one, I don't think, if this is how he wants to play. And what we can say is that he doesn't have enough farms as well to get his food going, to get up to T3. Unless he's just cut workers. So is he just not building workers at all? I would not recommend this. It's not hard to defend T3 units on a shit economy, so... Yeah, it looks like he's caught a lot of workers. 27. Maybe not the best player to go to. Alrighty. Right, Nixu, who's actually not cutting workers. Like, I don't know what's going on with people. 38. It's a 10 worker lead, that's huge. I think that John is just really having trouble dealing with this rush. He's put himself in this position by fishing. Maybe not scouting properly enough. Bad turret placement. Some mounties that I don't think are necessary. It's like he's trying to go for the kill, but I think you better to just contain your opponent T3 with like tech up. Especially when they've got their own troops standing army as well. Like he's never really gonna want to take a trade, is he? He just wants to sit around. If you really wanted to do like something extra in T2 here, I think what you do is you build some uh, frigates. And you send them over and you take the boats away as well. So Yoda's going to put some pressure on to Nixu here because it seems like he's bullied Lucky Ashman a little bit. He probably feels you need to keep him down. You see he's hit T3 now. So the situation that Lucky is in now is that they're both T3 but Nixu has a, a much better economy. And that's almost self-inflicted really. Can I get on the power core? Please repair it. Your worker's right there. This is this pain to watch. Completely preventable. 200 carbon has been withdrawn from your account. So some ore here. Because he spent all his uh, ore on turrets. That's fine. So is Yoda T3 yet? No, just about. I can see it there. So he's going to be in quite a good spot if you look at the worker counts here. 97 to 44, but how many of those are just boats? I suppose we could let him off in that regard. He'll be alright. I just don't think he's going to have the, the lead you would want in this instance. 
So he's sending his troops over because his, his opponent's D3, he wants to slow down him, hit him with anything. He's managed to snipe a couple of workers, which is great for him. Some strikes as well, helping out here from uh, Lockie. So he was going to be completely fine. And with two mech factories, he can just pump out tons and tons of strike mechs and start putting on the pressure that way. It's going to be very difficult to keep the boats alive from these. Because it's not exactly the biggest uh, body of water. You know, they are going to have to come in and deposit to the shipyard and they will get shot up. So Nixu looks like he's not doing too much with his lead. He's being quite defensive, to be honest. I think he could really cause some damage to, uh, to Lucky here. It's just pain to build it up against the edge, please. Three strikes chasing one strike. Let's just go and be aggressive with these, put the pressure on. He's not having to make any anti-mech stuff. No mech destroyer or anything like that. He's not quite on over as of yet to get a fort. He's only just started with a CC. He's be putting the pressure on, I think. John is T3 now. Didn't quite have a mech factory because of his ore situation. He's got it now. So he's chasing these strike mechs around with a bomber. Fortunately, a lot of his eco is over here. And you're just not quite caught on to the concept yet that you could just be shooting these boats. There's a couple of fighters here from John killing some workers. Still have to kill the boats with his air. Shouldn't be a hard defence though, because he doesn't have a huge air count. Here come the anti-air destroyers. Yeah. There's the strike. You just need to send the strike next. So just sit them here. Look, if you shut down the boats, he's got really no farms, except these three that are very exposed. And these strikes are going to go off and try and do some damage to Nixu here, who's still playing really, really defensive. It's a little bit annoying because of this big patch of ice, because he sort of walled himself in in this bit and doesn't feel like he can sprawl out with command centers. It's a really horrible psychological thing this does to you. You just feel like you're stuck. Just needs to get some command centers out here and grab up some of this land, get more farms and stuff, and get himself to T4. And again, we we do have two players who are rebels, and not a single one has a fort. Or speeders. Even if you think it's a a moral problem, you should be ethical and not have speeders. If you're playing against Empire, you should. Come on, they get that speed boost. Fuck them. Get the speeders out. This gets completely shut down by one unit. And I don't even mean one one type of unit, one one of that exact unit. Let's just shut this down. Much better than this bomber can. Crazy amount on the Nova here. Not sure he's... I think he's just bouncing workers around like musical chairs. So many strikes there, they can just kill the Night Destroyer. Doesn't have enough command centers to be taking this kind of damage. Grenadier is not the answer either. They're so fast. Nixu finally on the attack here. Doing the same sort of thing. So I'm just going to have two people getting absolutely culled by uh, strike mechs in this game. When there's a, a rebel on each team. I don't know if agreements were made that no speeders. Secret, secret spaceport. There's the fort. It's a, it's a sad thing to see. Your workers building the fort having to garrison from the strike mechs. Another mech factory. I don't think he really needs to make more strike mechs. I think he can just 
get more command centers and grab up the map. Try and get a forward on them. Phoenix who is finally branching out of his base here. Good to see. Sean getting the uh, the holocrons. The push here from uh, Nixon. Actually, this is really, really like dumb. Wait, just yeah. You know you got a, there's a rebel on the other thing. Maybe he's having a moment here. He's going, oh yeah, speeders. I can build those. His teammate doesn't have any air to support him. Just so much carbon about to be lost. These two should be counter-attacking now, with this, like, he just che chases them with these. He has to bring his own air. Is he gonna make a four? Yeah, then we got three on him. And he's been building turrets. Turrets as rebels. So you're hit T4, maybe going for T4 strike max. Having a bit of a role play in this military parade. Speeders are oh God, killing so much. It's, he's got his own air to defend it and he's not protecting it. It's understandable when it's someone else's because you've got to have that coordination element, but if it's your own, that's just unexcusable or inexcusable losses there. This is a very weird push. You don't often see T2 AA troopers. Guarding heavy strike max. Fluffy rabbit's movement speed. You don't even need them, really. Like. I don't think you need to kill the power core. You just run around and kill workers. You wouldn't see me throw two or three MDs at this, they'll just die. The counter speeders from his teammate. Or that army that he once had that he threw away. It's almost the definition of insanity pushing in here again with even less troops. Padawan on the defence, right? Sith Apprentice. I want to be politically correct about it. Didn't mean to misgender that one. Bit of a massacre here. Total massacre. There's some heavy weapons factories, I'm not sure what for. Since you're rebels. I'm liking this little wall of houses he's made. What is wrong with this image? I could kill them with some speeders or I could tickle them with some fighters. The worst thing is I'm even watching speeders counter the fighters. When they shouldn't do that. The fighters are stronger in the air combat. So he's at T4. I'm not exactly sure what his plan is, like unit wise. At the moment, it seems to be no unit wise. Max is just not the way to be going. It should just be troopers, fighters, and speeders. Like a, a forward. Like I would make a forward here with some troop centers and just shout out repeaters into Lucky Ashman's eco. And then just push with anti air turrets. 
Because all these building and speeders. And then defend with your own speeders. Then once you've got a decent enough uh, standing army or supporting units of the speeders and such that you can move out onto the map, you get some... Just throw grenadiers at this. And the rebels have got such good troopers. map control here, getting a bit of a forward up, fort coming up as well. Start throwing out some cannons and stuff. I don't think there's really any aggression being done to them at all, it's just pure defence from uh, John and Nixie here. Assault mechs, really? There was just rebels? Make cannons. I'd say going Sith Masters is probably a, a move available to John here. Does have holocrons. Does have an opponent who wants to feed him assault mix. Didn't seem to be any strike max left as well. I'd like to see a shield from these two. At least commit to like one part of the space that they're willing to save. Artillery? Let's get some more buildings here, more production. Like, sure they can afford this. 100 workers, we need to make more workers. Probably have like a couple of command centers here, a bit more of a, a forward as well. Start grabbing up this land because you, you run out of trees. Like, people need to think about that more when they play the mechs of Empire Trade Federation. Like, make sure you have enough carbon because you get such good value out of those units, the carbon food units, the old mechies. So again, nothing really been done. I can see some air now flying about from Nixie. Which will probably be a lot of angry pinging from Yoda about it. To try and get Lucky Ashman to deal with it. Colm Poingbig. I think that means coming. It's sort of mashed into a laptop keyboard. Not much to deal with these. There's full upgrades for Jumon though. If he gets enough MDs out, he'll be okay. If you look at that difference in stats, 175 health, 281. Just needs to get a bunch of them out. I don't know what's happened to uh, Nixie's air. I'm assuming he's managed to lose it. But it's, it's sorely needed just to stop this army from getting too ambitious because they could walk up and then with the speeders they're just completely fine. guys are marching forward. I think he's could have used this space. Get some production. I feel like Sith Masters were the answer here. As rare as that is, like truly. A couple of them would just cause such mayhem. And uh, rebel mounties as well. More 
here being lost. These players are both like being very aggressive with their pushing and stuff, but I think you need to be like counter-attacking them because I think they crumble and done it. There's a couple of strike max from John being sent out from these, which is good. But it should really be going for the other player, I think, the one that can't just make like rally a speeder. The one that's also causing him the most grief. Fighters. Should kill all this, really. Kill the cannon, kill the speeders, kill the artillery, they take quite a amount of damage. Still no advanced turrets. I don't know if that's maybe complacency because your teammates got air, but I'm probably you should really just get them because it just it gives you a lot more opportunity as a team. It means the air doesn't have to be defending. If you're getting attacked, they can be getting attacked at the same time. Rather than you having to fly back and defend. Because then you're just a victim of coordination and being out of position. If you can't afford the ore, just buy it from the space point and get it. If you've got all those turrets, you, you know, you get such good value out of it. Come on, build some temples. I'm honestly surprised, like, John's the kind of player that would do this. That would get some masters on the go. I've seen a lot of these AMDs coming out. They don't have a shield, though. So that, like, whole having all these uh, HP buffs isn't really meaning anything there. There we go, they got a shield, but it's, it's the worst place. Like the, the, the best place that you can stand in it is occupied by a carbon processor and a mech factory. These guys have not gotten the memo that we're to sit under the shield and they ran away and died. The air though, it's killing all this artillery. They do such decent damage to heavy weapons. Very strange uh, design concept considering that's where their counter is. It's that class of unit. Anti-airmobile. More assault mechs, which will go unpunished because there's not really any speeders and no Jedi. Or Sith, misgendering the game. Reported. So I think Lucky and Yoda have got the winning concept here. Just keep pushing with these, these units, defend them with the air. So they've got the best team play. And yes, sometimes a 2v2 can be about team play and not just two 1v1s. They're right up against the edge of the map now. A lot of land being taken away. I think. You just shield here. And you create a nice big unit arc here. Flood it with MDs and just split your units up across across the arc so that they're all firing. Take the least amount of splash damage. Please uh, address your economy, lucky. Unemployment is rampant in the Rebel Alliance. Almost got very quiet there. But uh, back to the uh, throwing away of mech destroyers. Hyperbole edition as the speeders are there. Wow. Hurts to watch. It's about as bad as these guys running out of the shield with no supporting units. I mean, like, the solution really is just to get a bit more mech factories and make some more workers. 
it looks like they're calling it quits there. Don't feel they can defend this army, as small as it is. <clears throat> or is that a classic uh, GG but no quit? It's Mounties? No, 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 you don't get the upgrades. Workers? I feel like one of them got the kill. Who is it? Promote them. I feel like if a worker gets the kill on an assault mech, he should just be respawned as the commander of an assault mech. General Veers. Quite yet, but they've done the premature GG. The thing I hate the most. No one likes a premature GG. That's no fun. Oh, a bit more aggression here, but again, it's against the rebel player that actually builds speeders. Thank, thank you. Rally. Built things. And he will not have a good time with this. I know he won't. Because he doesn't have a, like, a huge ego. Like, 76 workers. Maybe he lost some. I didn't quite see it. It's probably the air raids. He's just not replaced them. Yoda, you need to work on your macro. Like, this is tunnel vision right here. If you faced a stronger defense, they would just soak up all this aggression and then just out macro you. You need to be building workers and stuff. It's it's almost like lazy. You can't you can't be lazy, right? If you want to be a better player, you, you can't be lazy in that regard, because you're relying on one outcome. And if it doesn't happen, you're fucked. People catch on to that. Then they know they know what to do. It's like with Cal, we know just the triple. See, like this, the amount of units is getting smaller and smaller as well because the eco is just trash. It's about the same eco as like. Mid T3. Bunch of raiding and stuff going around. Yeah, like, lots of workers being lost. GG again. I think that's it now, though. It's an interesting game. That was not unanimous, but GG then. Well, I, I don't know. I think he's a pretty dead at this point because just based on decision making. You don't really have any carbon here as well. Like, look at all your workers stamped off. These lucky Ashman fighters will have so many kills. Goddamn lucky there's no commander or promotion system. Like command and conquer. He generals every one of them. Look at the stats, shall we? I always get whinged at for not showing the, the achievements. It's a lucky Ashman with the many units killed. Yoda with the MVP and the Razor of Buildings. Lucky Ashman with the largest army. That's I, don't, I think that might be the first time I've ever seen that. Economy, John had the best eco. Best research count as well, but just didn't quite get enough units out, or the right units to defend himself. Definitely had the, the best eco, yeah. Highest worker count as well. I could have swore he had two hollows, did you just not hold them? Or is it just maybe count what was at the end of the game, or longest length? I remember he had two hollows at one point. 3,000 extra over there. 
and here's the timeline thing for anyone that can even make sense or read or care about that. But anyway, if you look in the description and you want to play this online, you'll find links to where to get the game and uh, our GBG Discord if people want to go in there and organise games amongst themselves. Um, and you can play on Vubly, and you can see Vubly here in the background. There's a lot of patches, user patches and things that make the game a little bit better, like desktop widescreen mode, which you can see through the recording there. So anyway, take care, like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.